name's Scott Lemper. I was invited down here by Dave here. Um, I've been into styrene builds now for probably about seven or eight years. We started out with just a real small box. So I was not confident enough in myself to play with the materials. Um, I initially started getting all my materials from Nankin. Um, one of my most recent builds here is the Willies, which uh, is all done from flat styrene. Mostly um, 040 up to probably 080 as far as thickness goes. And everything's either cold formed or if you look underneath the hood, for instance, I use basic forms. I'll cut out the shape of the hood itself. Then I'll use strips to fill it in and I'll sand it till smooth and use filler to make it uh, complete. The cabs themselves, most of them, if they're nice and square like this, I'll use just a general form. I'll build up the corners with a square styrene rod, which is also here from Nankin. And that allows me to get the corners smooth. Um, a lot of the other material, the detail material comes from Nankin also. The rain drip rail, the body detail lines. Um, I'll make the general body and I'll actually skin it with either 0.015 or 0.020. Now, that will give me my, my door jam guidelines and the insets for bodies like this that has that kind of detail. Um, otherwise, it's mostly cut the strips. I will start from a from what I call a one-to-one -one copy of the body itself that I use. I'll cut out and use its templates. So I'll transfer that to the styrene, cut it out, and that gets me my finished product after about 70 hours. <laughs> um, I, I am providing, there's a few copies here, I'm not sure everybody wants one. It is styrene building kind of 101, the tools I use, uh, pictures of, of some general builds I've done uh, that help. If you look closely enough, you'll see the way some of the some of the builds were were started. For instance, this FC70 was my very first build. I figured it was safe. It was basically just a square box, but it turned out to be kind of a decent finished product. Looked like that when I was done. Some other details. This, uh, this also applies to just your accessories. If you want to do a toolbox for the back, if you want to do odds and ends accessories under the hood, it's really just a matter of cutting out styrene and forming it. It does sand well. You can fill in imperfections with putty filler. They have Tamiya white filler here, which is perfect, is what I usually like to use. That's uh, one of the facilities. They also have glue here that I used to use a lot of, but I kind of changed to MEK, M-E-K. As far as the bonding agent goes, it acts really, really fast. It creates a weld that you kind of work so with right after. Fuses it, right? Fuses it right away. It's all about kind of getting the chemicals to work with the styrene. So once you bond two pieces together, there's a chemical reaction, the, the plastic melts and it fuses together. That's how all these were made. The bed was made that way. Uh, the cab was made with that uh, product. This uh, was an earlier build of mine. Um, I'm into gassers and early hot rides, so I figured I'd go ahead and you give a try with one. So this one's all styrene, um, chassis, front end, everything built. Headers are styrene tube, right from here from Nankin. Actually, the Farmington store. <laughs> the trunk's got some details. These are store bought pro line bits. They're just stuck in the trunk. There's aluminum panels on the inside. Oh, gotta have aluminum panels. Oh, yeah. It's like a real car, right? <laughs> God, God, God. Um, my general tools that I use probably every day is just a simple Dremel. Um, some of the RC four-wheel drive builds that you see, like this one right here, um, we all know they start from a blazer, but uh, my, my favorite tool for cutting up the hard bodies is just this. I, I rarely use uh, an X-Acto knife. I'll sometimes open the doors on these by dragging an X-Acto knife backwards, but as far as separating the bodies and adding sections, this bed has a probably a three-quarter inch section added to it. Uh, the body itself is obviously cut, so you can separate the bed from it. That yeah, was all done with this this saw, bonded back together with, with uh, mech and styrene back pieces to kind of fuse the pieces together. Typical knife, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Some exacto knives, they have them here too. <laughs> they also have this, but a different brand. Um, the must-haves for doing this kind of stuff is what I would consider is what I just showed you, a real steel uh, straight edge. The wood ones work, but they don't stay true. That found it the hard way. Um, these are just a small assembly of my, my tools. It's, um, I use this tool a lot to do some fine line cutting or to cut something apart quickly. Different drums, 
I use a lot of. If I need perfect circles or ones I want to start uh, circle on, I'll just grab myself one of these cheap drafting aids. Um, always nice to have these guys here. And like I mentioned, I'll start uh, a couple of builds I've done in the past for customers. Our F-150, I just started with a full printout. I'll use that as my guide. I'll cut it out, put it on a piece of flat styrene. One of the things I trans, uh, transferred to doing this early is I used to use just these sections of styrene from the store, but I found that I found that if you trace that body onto this piece of styrene, you end up halfway. Now, oddly enough, this car was built that way with a section of, of, of styrene added to another piece of styrene with a splice filled in the middle. And you can't see it, but I moved on to getting larger sheets of cutoff styrene from eBay. So you can actually get, sorry, 040 up to you know, 1. 1.100 right from eBay in, in probably two foot by four foot sections for like 18 bucks. So I'll use that for the large pieces and just you know, scraps afterwards. Um, otherwise, almost everything you see that was styrene stacks. This engine's all styrene. It's all styrene put together with, with pieces of uh, different, different thicknesses. Um, even the, the, the couplings for the braided lines are all styrene tube. Uh, radiators from, from exclusive RC, but let's see. Otherwise, this car does have aluminum panels. Um, that's actually a styrene roll bar in this one. It's one of the first ones I did. Otherwise, I use mostly steel. Uh, and then all styrene bumpers are styrene, uh, the chute's styrene, and just some black cloth. Uh, what else? No, I'm probably missing something. The magazine showed some of the builds that uh, I've gotten to, into uh, RC car action. Uh, mostly recent ones. Yeah, it's almost all recent. At least in the last year, I believe, year or so. And they're all handmade. I would have brought them. I just kind of ran out of the room. wasn't sure how much room I had to display. Amazing work. Amazing work. Oh, thank you. I see you got some scale metal supply stuff out here. Yeah. Is that stuff that you use when building? I've started using scale metal supply stuff on just about every scratch build that involves anything to do with steel. The um, This one, for instance, has quite a few different tabs that were used to create the front suspension. Um, you'll see them on the ends of the I-beams. They're, uh, they're used for the connecting the, the suspension to the, the radius rods. I've used, um, there's probably not a single fab to build. There's one I'm doing right now that uh, is on my Facebook page, which is um, on that smaller uh, coupon there. If, um, if I'm doing something scratch build, it's always got, I've got a stash of steel metal supply stuff at home that I got from the Farmington store. I used to buy it directly from him, but we talked him into supplying Nankin with his accessories, so now I buy it at the store level. And he's all, and we are one of his very few dealers, too. So, yeah, he's a good guy. He's always coming out with new stuff. I, I don't know of another metal fabrication, RC-dedicated accessory company that is as um, proficient as he is is coming out with new stuff almost every couple of weeks. Something for our hobby. Yeah, a lot of stuff. So... When you're coming up with like you want to build something, how do you decide? How do you decide to how big to blow that up to know that it's going to be 10 scale and not one six scale? Or so yeah, a couple of good question. This one is actually one ninth scale, uh, the way it came out years ago when I did it. I usually start with the wheelbase. If I already bought a chassis like the Gatekeeper, this is just saying on a Gatekeeper stock chassis, which I think. And, and inches came out to be like 12 and three quarters inches. So I just scaled the drawing down so the wheelbase fit. Like the wheelbase. Right? Yeah, so it's this is probably not one tenth scale. It, was probably, it could be ninth, it could be a little larger. <clears throat> but um, I'll start with a known wheelbase and I'll build a car around it. Um, this one, for instance, I just kind of went with. I actually built the chassis and I built the truck to the chassis. So this one has a completely <laughs> completely fab chassis under it it's um front suspension part of it is hpi the rest of it's handmade rear suspension is just one of those 
inexpensive the Nora jobs. So are the shocks. I got them at uh, K and K actually at a swap meet. <laughs> so it's um, this one was a lot of fun to build. Yeah, just put it back together. I'm kind of surprised it works, honestly. <laughs> but um, other than that, as far as my general supplies, styrene comes from 99% of it comes from uh, the Yankton guys. The sheets that I get for just the uh, longer bodies is you know, online. It's an eBay thing. The uh, metal fabrication, um, almost all my rod, 8th inch, 3 16th inch. If it's not stainless steel, I'll get it right from uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. So it's all locally accessed. I do use uh, rolls of 3 16th stainless steel. You know, I'll just roll out and straighten. That's from a company called Inline Tube up in, uh, I think it's Sterling Heights. They're an awesome company to deal with. Uh, ship it Inline quickly. Tube. Yep. Inline Tube's kind of famous. They make with the Autorama. Anybody see it? Yeah. Inline Tube. You see the cars they restore? Incredible. Probably some of the best restorations of original muscle cars you'll ever see. But um, that's their side business. That's not their regular business. You open you, you uh, if you order something from them with uh, like uh, uh, like brake lines, for instance, mm -hmm. for my car, everything would come all pre vent all the factory vents and everything. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they're amazing. It's amazing how many molds they must have to pre vent all that stuff. It's good to me. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's kind of a cool little uh, hobby. And I do take it to another level because I got kind of addicted to it. Oh, uh, you can tell. Yeah, but. Um, <laughs> It's fun. Afterwards, it's uh, it's fun to drive them. It's fun to play with them. They almost all get driven. Uh, some sit on a shelf. I'm just afraid to scratch them. But uh, some are collaborations, like the Suburban, the, the Teal Suburban there, came to me as a, a front cab of a resin poured Proline 66 Chevy Lexan body, but it was a resin casting. So, anybody heard of Metal Masher? Blake Lively Suburban. So anyway, he's the one that makes the, the hand-formed aluminum bodies that look just like a real car. But then he'll smash them up on purpose. So anyway, he asked me if I would help him build a Suburban so that he can take castings off of and make other castings. So he sent me his, his resin pieces. I built the rest of the cab out of uh, the cab back out of styrene. And the rest of that was kind of history. But um, the chassis hand-built there too. Yeah, otherwise, I mean... Styrene stuff is, is easier than you think if you're kind of leery of it. It's it's fun to do. Take them the bike. Get the right light. Is that yours that you built? Yes, ma'am. Oh man. Amazing, right? Well, one spot where it wants to hit, I just built a light box in the back and it, uh, it interferes with it. But um, this was a lot of fun to do. I kind of just winged it on this. I had no idea if I was going to make this work or not. There's a guy in Hawaii that um, is a genius at this. And he, he actually has a, a, a Yoda that he did one to. And his is extremely well done. All his brass pieces are all manufactured almost to just precision lengths, mine aren't. Um, his are all highly polished. Um, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a blast there to do. It actually rolls too, I was shocked that it works. Yeah, it won't hop, but it does uh, raise and lower. Very cool. I don't know. I've actually only had it around the basement a couple times. Really? Yeah, it's one of those. Uh, I know if I'll put it it's, down. It's though, a looking car. Yeah. <laughs> if I put it down, it'll probably break. So. It's a looking car. Yeah, it's uh, it's a looking car, but it does it does run. That's awesome. Oh yeah, got it. Oh yeah, man. Oh man, I've been RC for like 35 years, 20 years at least. So it does run, that's my first and longest ship I went on right there. <laughs> yes, it works. 
This had replaced the rear servo a couple of nights ago. I wasn't sure if it was. It still runs, so it does. As always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks for watching, and we can't wait to see you again.